I'm joined by Dr. Snow, and we're going to be talking about the top 10 foods for your brain health. So, Dr. Yeah. Snow, let's start with uh, number 10. Number 10, blueberries. And why blueberries? Like, when you listen to a lot of people on the internet, they talk about these brain health foods, but they don't explain or they don't know why it's good for you. So, I'm a biochemist also, and I want to look at structures. When we talk about these foods, why are they good for you? So blueberries, what does it have? You know, they used to think about it as antioxidant. I'm not, antioxidant is fine, but it's really the polyphenols. What are polyphenols? We talk about that in our initial video on our channel. Are polyphenols good for your brain? Yes, they are. And there's a lot of polyphenols in blueberries. And polyphenols are aromatic rings with hydro hydroxyl groups on them. What are hydroxyl groups? They're OH groups. And because it has OH groups next to each other on an aromatic ring, it makes it very good for disrupting and preventing plaque and tangle formation. Why is plaque and tangle so important that start accumulating in your 20s? Because they start screwing up your memory they get in the way of connecting to remember thoughts. And that's why actually blueberries are very good for your brain. They improve cognition. You know, there's been studies that have shown that eating a lot of blueberries every day actually improves your memory, improves your cognition. And they also have proanthocyanins in them, which I talk about a lot. You know, proanthocyanins are in red wine and cat's claw and blueberries and dark chocolate, and those are the epicatechin dimers. So I'm gonna show on this video the structure of epicatechin, which is in T's, but then you have epicatechin, two of them, two aromatic rings, two OH groups. So you have four OH groups on one side of the molecule. That means it can form a hydroxyl wedge and actually get into very insoluble stuff, and it makes it fall apart. So blueberries are good for you because of the polyphenols and proanthocyanins that are present in there, and it helps improve memory. Number, Number nine. nine, elderberries. Love elderberries. Again, these are aromatic rings with phenolic groups. What does it contain? Polyphenols and proanthocyanins. We're gonna keep on talking about it. It's also, Polyphenols and proanthocyanins also are anti-inflammatory, they're immune boosting, and in elderberries there happens to be a lot of vitamin C. So not only is it good for your brain health, it's also antioxidant as well. So blueberries and elderberries are my 10 and 9 choices. All right, number 8. Number 8, almonds and cashews. A lot of vitamin E in there, antioxidants, um, cashews are also rich in magnesium, vitamin E, folate. So it does have antioxidant properties, but it also has healthy fats, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids, helps regulate blood sugar, even, you know, it causes, it's a low glycemic index, which means it's very good, you can eat a lot of it and not worry about gaining weight or having a high glycemic index, which you find in a lot of carbohydrates. All right, number seven. Number seven, oolong tea. Not green tea, not black tea, but oolong tea. We actually showed and we got patents issued on that, that oolong tea is better for your brain health than black tea or green tea. Oolong tea is partially fermented Camellia sinensis, you know, it's partially oxidized and green tea is unoxidized, unfermented, black tea is fully fermented, fully oxidized. So again, the teas are very interesting because they have two OH groups on aromatic rings that are next to each other. So it's a epicatechin and epicatechin dimers. And I talk about this in my 2019 paper that I'm going to show on the screen. And we compared uh, epicatechin dimers. And if you look at epicatechin, just epicatechin itself, it's aromatic 
and two OH groups, but the two OH groups are next to each other. If you look at the structure of curcumin and resveratrol, the OH groups are not adjacent. They're over by one amino acid on the aromatic ring. So they moved over. So you don't have two, you actually have one and then one over here. And then the other one has a methyl group instead of a phenolic OH group. So I'm gonna show the structures of curcumin, resveratrol, and then epicatechin that you find in tea. And epicatechin is very good for you because of these two hydroxyl groups next to each other. And oolong tea is actually the best. And you know, we have oolong tea extract in our you know, dietary supplement called Percepta that we talked about. So that's number seven on my list. Number six, black currant. Love black currant. It has proanthocytins again, epicatechin dimers. I actually, when I was uh, making a product called Percepta Professional, I was looking for a third ingredient. And, what in, and then I was looking, okay, which one has proanthocytins? Because I found, you know, that it's very good in cat's claw and oolong tea. Well, guess what? Black currant actually has different mo modalities, and this one has 25% proanthocytins. It's a fruit powder that grows in New Zealand or Europe, and it's rich in proanthocytins. So it's anti-inflammatory, it's rich in vitamin C, it helps a better blood flow to the brain, and so black currant is really an amazing food for your brain. All right, number five. <laughs> You're gonna like this, your favorite, red wine. Red All wine, right. why is red, you know, people who drink a lot of red wine, they have a lower incidence of dementia in France. So what's in red wine? Guess what? Polyphenols, proanthocyanins, epicatechin dimers. Red wine is antioxidant, improves cardiovascular health, better circulation, anti-inflammatory effects, and improves blood flow. And so drinking a glass of red wine every day or every couple of days will actually improve your cognition and memory and brain health. So I do like red wine. All right, number four. Number four, grape seed extract. Guess what it has in it? Polyphenols, proanthocyanins, catechin, epicatechin, gallic acid, which is a polyphenol, improves blood circulation, has neuroprotective effects, actually reduces the risk of cognitive decline. There's been a bunch of papers I'm gonna show on the screen that have come out on grapeseed extract. So grapeseed extract is my number four top 10 brain food. One, two, three. Number three, dark chocolate. Not milk chocolate, dark. Guess what's in dark chocolate? Hmm, <laughs> let me wager a guess. Polyphenols. Polyphenols and proanthocyanins epicatechin. It also stimulates the production of endorphins, which is brain's natural feel-good chemicals, contains serotonin precursors, contributes to improving mood and reduced feeling of stress and anxiety. I guess this is why we like to eat chocolate. And That's flavonoids great. are in there that are linked to improved heart health and better blood flow. And there's a small amount of caffeine in chocolate that's actually beneficial to brain health. You know, when we did work on our oolong tea that's in Percepta, we noticed that there is about a third of a cup of coffee of natural caffeine that comes out of the oolong tea extract. So actually, caffeine is actually good for brain health. So it's good to have, you know, different teas, but also dark chocolate is number three. So I want to get us on to number two, but I have to ask one clarifying question, which is, is it true the darker the better when you're talking about dark chocolate? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I would think, you know, if it's darker, it may have more polyphenols and more proanthocyanins. So if that's the case, yeah, then yes, it is better for you, the darker the chocolate. But um, I think, you know, all the kinds of dark chocolate are good. Excellent. Two. 
Number two. Guess what? Cat's Claw. Uncaria tomentosa, a woody vine that grows in the Amazon rainforest, 200 feet in length. Originally was thought to be good for the immune system. The alkaloids in it are anti-inflammatory. We discovered that the polyphenols and proanthocyanins, of course, get into the brain in a few minutes and start looking at targeting and reducing brain plaques and tangles. So it's very good for cognition, memory, brain health. It has alkaloids in it. It has polyphenols in it. It has proanthocyanins in it. Some of which I discovered proanthocyanin B2, and C1, and B4. And these have to do with the different link with linkages between two aromatic rings. And here you have four OH groups. So they're forming a hydroxyl wedge. They open up a beta sheet, secondary folding of insoluble plaques and tangles that are hard to get rid of. But this stuff seems to work very well. Not only cat's claw, it's anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. And usually it's only concentrated to 3% if you buy it in the store. But that has to do with our number one pick. Coming up, number one, everybody should be taking a concentrated polyphenol and concentrated polyproanthocyanin. Number one is Percepta. It's a dietary supplement, but it's a plant extract of the combination of concentrated cat's claw, known as PTI 00703 cat's claw, and oolong tea extract. You know, um, I was doing some recertification of Percepta, and it was, you know, it was sitting around for about three years. You want to see if it's still good. Guess what? It didn't degrade at all. And the polyphenol content in cat's claw is over 40%, and then you have the alkaloids that are in there, and then it's very good for inflammation, it's good for your immune system, it's good for your brain health. So I would say the number one brain food actually should be Percepta, and everybody should be taking it. And you know, the important things is it has the proanthocyanins which are the epicatechin dimers or four adjacent hydroxyl groups, which is really good for clearing out the junk that accumulates in your brain as you age. So, so concentrated cool. cat's claw with concentrated oolong tea, extract. oolong tea extract. And oolong tea extract is polyphenols, proanthocytins, epicatechin. The cat's claw has epicatechin also but it also has epicatechin dimers. And as I'm harping on this video, these epicatechin dimers, when you look at the structure, two aromatic rings, two OH groups on one ring, two OH groups on another ring, you have four, and they're on one side of the molecule. So if you have very insoluble plaques or tangles, they're a beta sheet, very hard to break apart, insoluble. This stuff goes in like a zipper, unzips, and the whole thing falls apart. And I actually showed this in my 2019 paper where Cat's Claw was shown by circle of icron spectroscopy, which is looking at how proteins fold. And in plaques and tangles, you have a very strong beta sheet secondary structure, which is basically like a zipper, hard to unlock, but the prothocytins fit in like a wedge. Think of a wedge opening up something and then the whole thing falls apart and we showed it. So that's why that's my number one pick. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Snow. As always, it's always a okay. pleasure. Okay. Thanks a lot, man.